guys of Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Chad on Score North and scorenorth.com. It's a scoop session here on a Tuesday with our friend Darren Doogie Wolfson from the Five Eyewitness News Sports Department. Some inside information and a little reckless speculation about your favorite Minnesota sports teams. And we've reached that time in the pre-draft process where guys are getting arrested for DWIs. Tavondre Sweat, man, he almost made it, man. Just two more weeks. Can you imagine being like his representation? Oh, dude. (laughs) Millions of dollars at stake here. Ubers, cabs, personal rides, limousines. Just, yeah. It's a Sunday. It's like a brunch at noon, two o'clock in the afternoon, dude. Just get a ride. Oh, he got pinched in daylight? Oh, yeah. Sunday at like 2, 12 p.m. Mm. Oh, so he counted on the, yeah, they don't pull people over in the daylight. (laughs) I don't even think Uh, he thought about that. He just made a dumb mistake. But that's no, 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 you're right. But then we also have, you know, this is, it's the fear mongering season too, where the quarterback that you love as a fan or as a team, all of a sudden, like Merrill Hodge goes out and does a media tour with our guy H Lake saying, Drake May is the type of guy that'll get you fired as a head coach or a general manager. So Doogie, what? What should and shouldn't we believe in these last two weeks? Well, speaking of media tours, I was supposed to connect with Dan Orlovsky yesterday, but his car caught on fire. That was a new one. What? I've been doing this 27 years. And, hey, I get it. Like, the new technology in these cars, I understand it. But he was on his way to the Bristol ESPN studios to connect with me, a few others. His car literally caught on fire. So I have to reschedule my Dan Orlovsky media tour. Wow. Yeah, I mean, who knows at this point, Phil? I do want to clear up one thing, though, that I think got lost in translation, I think, last week in one of our sessions. Jaden Daniels has all sorts of interest in being a Viking. Okay, the Vikings haven't been able to connect with him yet. That's still a work in progress. Could still happen. There's nothing set in stone, at least as of last night. Like, if there's an update today, I apologize. But, like, the two sides... There's still some dialogue there. It's still possible. I don't know how likely it is, but it's still possible that Kevin O'Connell will connect with Jaden somewhere along the way here in the next 14-ish days. I think you have up until, what, April 24th to connect. So a couple days before or a day before. So there still is that possibility. But like Jaden Daniels, like who wouldn't, right? His guy Justin Jefferson is here. You look at this situation. It is tailor-made. For a rookie quarterback. So I think a couple aggregators somehow misconstrued that. Like, make no mistake about this. Jaden Daniels would love to be a Viking. That is my understanding. I don't know how likely it is. If I were a betting man here 16 days out, I don't think Jaden Daniels ends up here in Minnesota. But I'm just telling you, he would have all sorts of interest in being a Viking. So it, it's a scheduling thing more than uh, than uh, I don't don't want to talk to O'Connell and the Vikings thing. Yes, and I don't know what took okay. place after the pro day in Baton Rouge, you know, with Josh McCown, a couple other Viking staff members there, where I don't know if they had to hurry off to Chapel Hill. Like, I don't know what exactly took place there, but mm-hmm. the Vikings were supposed to connect with him, not for a long session, but for a one-on-one conversation post-pro day. Mm-hmm. That never took place, but I don't necessarily read too much into that. I'm more looking at, does Kevin O'Connell connect with Jaden? Because he has connected with Bo Nix, Michael Penix Jr., Drake May, J.J. McCarthy. We know Caleb Williams is going one, no reason to connect with Caleb, but Jaden Daniels is that other guy just waiting to hear if that connection will take place. Mm. So I, I want to ask you, ordinarily we, we talk about sort of like information and we speculate I want to actually shift and talk about what you're because you're on social media. You're you're definitely at the heartbeat of what fans are thinking and feeling and and uh, and you're out and about. It feels like it would fans would view it as a failure or some sort of cowardice act if the Vikings don't trade up aggressively and get a quarterback. That's my sense. Do you feel the same way? I do. Although I've heard from a few people saying, please move up without giving up the 2025 first round pick. So can you get up to Harbaugh? That Harbaugh wants his guy, J.J. McCarthy, in a ready-made situation. That he wants to place his guy, J.J., 
here in Minnesota, that he knows his guy, JJ, can succeed more so than anywhere else here in Minnesota. So can you get up to five by giving up 11, 23, plus whatever else that is not the 2025 first round pick? But yes, my sense is from hearing from a number of people, it's, I don't want to say like move up or bust. Like if they end up with Murphy, the interior defensive lineman from Texas who was in town yesterday, who I don't think that's a smokescreen. Like I think the Vikings love that kid. Like if they end up with him plus Michael Penix Jr., like I'm not sure I can label that a complete bust. But yes, to me, the perception from at least the people I've heard from Phil is they need to move up. But a lot of people tell me, please hold on to that 2025 first round pick. Yeah. The Penix thing to me is intriguing. In fact, we're, we're going to talk about that on uh, PD today. Albert Breer wrote extensively about it. And he, to me, is one of the most interesting cases, Dukes, because I'm not I'm not so sure that the media and the fan base ha- haven't dropped him uh, too low. And that coaches and, and what Breer said is he his perception was that Penix had slid or or was potentially going to be a second round pick because of what scouts told Breer. But then Breer started to check in with coaches and the coaches are like, oh, no, no. The problem with Breer, we can fix and we love him because he's got such a he's got a great arm and he has things that can't be taught. And his his uh, weaknesses are things that can be coached out. So to me, Penix becomes or is a really an interesting one, because there's always a guy, if not two, where the public perception goes one way and the league perception and clearly the coaches are more important than the scouts goes a different way. So I I would say that I would not be surprised one bit if Penix goes to the Vikings at like 11. If Penix gets taken here, but higher than people think, because I think he he has become the wild card guy where we've, we might have lost the narrative of what the truth is regarding Michael Penix. All right. Well, the wild card guy is the wild card team, the team drafting right after you. So that's why you would have to go quarterback Correct. at 11. Mm-hmm. Maybe not my scenario where you go Murphy at 11. Can Murphy fall to 23 or can you move up from 23 to get Murphy? I will say, like, yeah, I think there are certain things you can coach up. Can you coach up the durability issue? Are there things you can change with good one. his right. style of play? I don't think the age is a concern. I've not heard anything from Egan that suggests because he's, what, 24 or about to turn 24, that that's some sort of concern. I've not heard that. But the durability thing is real. I still don't know, hey, subject to change, right? But in this moment, 16 days out, I'm not sure I see Penix landing here. That would not be my betting favorite. Put it that way. Interesting. Do you feel comfortable with information you've gathered? Like, do you do you feel comfortable handicapping the race at all? Take Caleb out. They've, they've had one-on-one time with a lot of these guys, Jaden Daniels. Is it a smoke screen that they haven't met with Jaden Daniels? Are they trying to put out the, yeah, we're not that not that interested, but really they're obsessed and they've been checking his social media every day? You know, I wouldn't necessarily rule that out. Put it this way. I sense the Daniels camp has been a little bit more aggressive in trying to make a connection hmm. right in this moment than the Vikings. But like I was led to believe, I said this a few weeks ago, I sense the Vikings would be plenty comfortable with any of the three, Daniels, May, McCarthy. Mm -hmm. So maybe there is something to be said about some sort of smoke screen. But like in this moment, I guess I'll take the bait that I don't think it's going to be Jaden. So, I mean, I don't know if it's Drake or JJ. I'm telling you, Phil, like I think they'd be comfortable with either. And so I guess my money would be on one of those two, taking Jaden out of the equation, Penix out of the equation, Nick's out of the equation, but I guess I can't pinpoint exactly which one. So let, let's talk about uh, Drake May for a, a second, because as Phil said, uh, Merle Hodge blasted him. Now Hodge has been has been spot on on certain guys, and he's been wrong. And I mean that's that's just how things go. Um, more importantly, it feels like there has been an undercurrent of late, and this is what happens uh, sixteen days out. An undercurrent of May slander taking the nation by storm. You know, mm-hmm. watch out for this, watch out for that. Um, back to the smokescreen thing. Is the May slander a legit slide of the guy who teams, you know, didn't like as much as we thought? 
or are or are a lot of people now in our business being used to try to slander May to get him to drop? That's that's my question. I, I always get very skeptical when like right before the draft two weeks out we now find a guy who we liked a lot and say ah maybe not he's got a little look at these flaws look at that flaw what do we think on where do we think the truth lands on drake may well i mean of course it's all on background but who exactly is doing the slandering like i'll just say this going back to the feedback that i gathered coming out of the combine Drake May was really impressive in right. those formal interviews. Like you talk to coaches, heck, talk to Joe Rossi or others that have coached against Drake May. Heck, I get it. Like what else is a teammate going to say? But like in my conversation with Spencer Rowland of Apple Valley High School, on camera, off camera, like just the way he was gushing about Drake. Spencer was Drake's starting right tackle the last two years. So there's that Twin Cities connection to Drake May. Spencer just visited the Vikings the last couple of days. But I'm just saying like everything I've gathered, I'm not buying. I guess what I'm saying, Judd, is I'm not buying the slander. I think the kid is the real deal. See, my issue with like, and, and you know, Merrill Hodge has watched years of film, you know, I mean, literally going back to his NFL playing days and edge NFL matchup on ESPN was a with great Ron show. Jaworski. Yeah. yeah. So listen, like that guy knows what he's looking at. It was on like at. at 4 a.m., but it was great. Wait, who cares? I loved it. Well, it started off quick side street. They used to air it at, you know, whatever, Saturday or Sunday morning at like 8.30 or 9. And then they started pushing it back to 7.30 and then 6.30. And then it was like airing up against infomercials at 4. Welcome home from the bar. Let's break <laughs> yeah. some stuff down. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, but my issue is like it's a really black and white thing to say that Drake May is going to get someone fired. Well, Drake May getting circumstance matters here. Situation matters. Drake May getting drafted by the Patriots who have zero noteworthy weapons, brand new defensive minded head coach. It's kind of a train wreck organization right now. Those guys might get fired if they draft Drake May and don't have any infrastructure for him to succeed. But don't you think it's a different story if the Vikings were to draft Drake May? Like, I don't. Those are two completely different worlds. Drake May with Patriots, Drake May with Vikings, Doogie. Amen. There is not, trying to avoid hyperbole or any sort of homerism, like I can't like find a better situation for a rookie quarterback. Am I missing one, Judd? Like no. you're as level-headed as anybody. Take Thank that as you. a compliment. I mean, like, the, if, 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 are the Rams drafting a quarterback? Like they'd be a great I situation. Am I missing something? I'm teams? including Denver. I'm including Vegas, Washington. Like no. you laid out New England. I there's not a better situation. I mean, the only isn't. one, the only the only one I can think of, and it's because of the coach's previous success, is if the Giants were gonna draft one. Because Day Dable's been good, but nobody has the infrastructure. Like the yeah, Vikings the, have the coach have no and the infrastructure. Yeah. No, you're right. Hundred percent. It's not just the head coach, too. I'm telling you, like. You talk to people in Egan, they are just gushing left and right about Josh McCown. Like Josh McCown, yeah, I don't know what the end game is, head coach, whatever, but like if he wants to be a head coach, like he's interviewed already for head coaching jobs. So yeah. it's not like yeah. I'm going out on a limb, but like he's got head coach potential. I get it that by title, I suppose Wes Phillips is above Josh McCown, but the fingerprints Josh McCown is going to have on this rookie quarterback like we can't undersell Wes that Phillips angle. And, Wes Phillips and fingerprints in the same sentence. There, I see what you're doing, dude. <laughs> He's currently so, I mean, suspended. Yeah, Wes is. isn't doing anything right now. He's, He's sitting in my. He's watch, watching TV with Stella in Correct. the living room. Yes, yes. What is this week? Almost week two of the suspension. He's back. What April twenty fourth? Timed yeah. perfectly. He's back for the for the first round of right. of the draft. But like Josh, Kevin. Okay, the weapons, the tackles, there's just so much in place, right? Like playing a lot of games indoors, just all sorts of things just to lay out that a rookie quarterback is in such an advantageous position here that I would almost bet on any of these guys. So yeah, the Vikings like a lot of these guys. I would almost bet on any of these guys having success here. Like I don't know if I can side with Merrill Hodge. Right. And hey, trust me, Merrill forgets more about football in two seconds than I'll ever know. But 
I don't know if I can side with Merrill Hodge that if Drake May ends up here, that in two or three years, Kevin O'Connell is getting fired. I'm not there. Which leads me to, uh, on a Tuesday, recklessly speculate like it's a Thursday. I broached this very briefly, Doogie, with Phil and Declan yesterday. But the more I think about what you just said, and the more that you sort of put the pieces together of how this is going to go, could we see one of the top guys? So, you know, it would have to be one of, of the top guys after Caleb. Jaden Daniels, Drake May, maybe McCarthy. But especially those first two. Could we see them attempt to pull an Eli or Elway stunt? Because if I'm about to be taken by the Patriots, I know I'm being set up to fail. Like, I know I'm going into, I am literally opening the doors to hell and the fires of Gehenna are going to swallow up my football career. But if I know the Vikings are talking to the Patriots, and like of all the teams that might approach the Patriots, I'm I'm with you guys. I can't find like a, well, but the Vikings have this wrong or that wrong. I just wonder if I'm an agent and I can orchestrate something, and I'm like, you know what, Drake May, my he's a great young man, and I love him being my client. But if the Patriots take him, we're all screwed, right? I just think it makes a lot of sense to try to force a hand to say the Minnesota Vikings are our choice. And basically, that's where we want to go. Not saying it works, but it's worked before, and it makes a lot of sense. Doesn't it? Well, I wouldn't dismiss it. I mean, like even on Daniels, yes, all sorts of interest in being a Viking. But trust me, from his side, like all sorts of interest in going to, to Washington. Maybe to avoid that New England scenario. I don't know that for sure. That would be me. That's the one I'd want to avoid. Yes. But like comfortable going to Washington if it comes down to that going number two. All right. So J.J. McCarthy represented by William Morris, Joel Siegel and company. Those are powerful agents. Yep. Okay. Drake May represented by Creative Arts Agency. Very, very powerful agents slash agency. I'm just saying, Judd, I wouldn't necessarily rule that out. That if you know the Vikings are having dialogue with New England, doing everything in your power to push that along yeah. to get your client here to Minnesota. Yeah. My last, and we'll get to some other stuff here too. Uh, my last thought for now is there's a lot of franchises. New England is one, the commanders to some extent that are looking, even the Bears kind of like the Bears have some better infrastructure, but there's a lot of franchises this year and every year that are looking for a quarterback to save their team. Hey, we've just wound up in this horrible situation. We have fired people. We won four games last year and we need to get that quarterback in house to save the franchise like Peyton Manning in 1998, 99 with the Colts, right? The Vikings aren't in that situation. So I, that's where I keep going back to. We, we, we tend to evaluate this process as if the Vikings are spinning the roulette wheel and they need to figure out who the one answer is and if they don't. But I think if there's like six first-round quarterbacks, I think four or five of them could be correct answers for the Vikings. I, I, and maybe I'm being too homerish and optimistic about their infrastructure. But I think, that, I think they have maybe four correct possible answers here. I agree. I will also say I think this is one of those unique years because some of the other feedback I've heard is really the Vikings are going to move up for quarterback number four. My comeback is other years, quarterback four this year right. is quarterback one. Yeah, correct. So this is just – it's a different year. So don't look at it like that. Like the Vikings have to give up all this capital to move up for the fourth-rated quarterback. The fourth-rated quarterback this year – is legit. The Vikings have looked at this quarterback class for a long time, pinpointed this class to get their quarterback of the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, before we get to some more scoops here, the rest of Doogie's scoops bag, Judd, let's tell the audience about our number one draft pick for fixing your electrical systems and maybe even your hot tub at home. Yeah, that's right. There is only one answer to take uh, first overall in this draft, and you are looking at their vans pulling out right now. Busy morning for our friends at Finch Home Solutions, but it always is because you know what? They want to take care of your home when it comes to any electrical issues, big or small. We're talking upgrades to current systems, electrical servicing, 
uh, fixing storm damage, breakers tripping, flickering lights. I could go on and on, but you know what? The best thing to do is to call Finch and have them come to your house. There's nothing more important than your home and your family, and Finch wants to make sure that it's taken care of. The specials include $199 for a whole home safety inspection, a value of $357. I'm telling you, my friend Cody and his team at Finch Home Solutions do it right. 612-357-2604, finchhomesolutions.com, finchhomesolutions.com. Okay, Dukes, what else do we have in your scoop bag on this? All right, well, I'm looking at a Vikings email. So, Quasi Adolfo Mensa will meet with the media. Pre-draft availability two weeks prior to the first round of the draft. So, that will take place on Thursday morning. But then I'm looking ahead to Friday, April 26th. First round selection with the S in parentheses. First round selection, S in parentheses, press conference at TCO Performance Center. Are they foreshadowing that it's only going to be a singular player, (laughs) not plural? (laughs) Right? Because as of right now, you have 11 and 23. Isn't the idea? You're drafting two guys in the first round. Yeah. There will be selections meeting the media on Friday, early afternoon, April 26th. Yet this email, S in parentheses, very interesting. Well, it would have been more interesting if it just said Justin Herbert press conference at TCO Performance <laughs> Center. Covering their bases. Selection? Selections. You, you never know. Yeah. No, it's very I love uh, it. Well, but if you look at like Saturday, it says selections available, right? Yeah. <laughs> there is no S in parentheses. It is wow. It's a smoke plural. screen in an email from PR. That's where we're at. Nice here. work, Columbo. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So anyway, the Vikings offseason program begins on Monday. Kevin O'Connell will spend some time with us on Monday. We'll get some access to players on Tuesday. So certainly things ramping up. I will credit Jordan Schultz with the initial se- steam on, on the defensive Lyman Tart coming off the board to Miami that the Vikings were in on him. It just screams like I haven't even looked at a recent list of available interior defensive linemen. I have to yeah. imagine at this point. It's pretty darn thin. Tyre like, Tart was one of the been best the last available. like legit guy that was available, but like the Vikings are still on the lookout for interior defensive line help. So whether that's the draft, a guy like Murphy, or somebody later in the draft, or if there's still a free agent out there, the Vikings are still on the lookout for that specific position or positions interior of the defensive line. Carl Anthony Towns is back. When do you think? Four. Well, I don't think it's tonight. Left? Yeah, I mean, heck, how great would it be if he's back tomorrow? Because you think about, like, the three-way tie scenario, Minnesota, Oklahoma City, Denver, there still is a scenario where if the Wolves lose to Denver tomorrow night, that they lose out on the three-way tie scenario. Mm -hmm. They are in a great spot, two-way tie, them with the Thunder, them with the Nuggets. How great would it be if Carl Anthony Towns somehow comes back tomorrow night in Denver, but I think that's a little aggressive. The question is, can he get in for a few minutes on Sunday? This points back to what Glenn Taylor told me on March 28th. It got lost in the ownership, you know, bleep show. But at the end of my conversation with Glenn, he mentioned, hey, Cat is, quote, ahead of schedule. Now, Shams has advanced that saying, hey, like it's pointing to a return in the regular season. So, yeah, the question is, like, not tonight, but could it be Friday against Atlanta or Sunday against Phoenix? Or do the Wolves wait the extra week and he is back for game one, either April 20th or 21st? But the point is, it's been the point the whole way, Phil. Like, he was always coming back. It was not a season-ending type surgery. Yeah, maybe it's a bit aggressive. Maybe we thought, hey, it was more realistic, like, for a game three or a game four in the first round. And now we're talking about perhaps – later this week, but he has made great progress. They plan on having him back sooner rather than later. Super interesting if you look at the standings here too. So it's it's Wolves and Denver tied, and then OKC is a game back in the loss column. Wolves, like you said, Wolves have great tiebreakers in the one, one-on-one matchups head-to-head. Uh, but, but if you look at the schedules, the Wolves have to play Denver on the road tomorrow night back-to-back. And then they get Phoenix in the last game. It's a home game on Sunday fighting for their lives to avoid the play-in. So like Phoenix is going to be playing out the season here. And the Wolves are too because they're looking for the one seed. Denver, 
Now they do have three road games out of the four. The home game is the is the Timberwolves, but they're winning these road games at Utah, at San Antonio, at Memphis. If Denver beats the Timberwolves tomorrow night, they win out almost certainly, and they and they get the one seed. And then Oklahoma City plays four home games to finish out. Sacramento's not a gimme. San Antonio probably is. Milwaukee is still kind of fighting for positioning. And then Dallas is absolutely fighting. So it's going to be a wild last week here to figure out what the one, two, and three seeds look like. And like we talked about earlier, I mean, you're literally going to play Hall of Famers in your first round, almost certainly, against the Lakers or the Warriors or maybe the Suns. So buckle up Buckle up. Now, if they win tonight, they officially clinch a top three seed. Realistically speaking, like to me, the floor seems to be two. When you lay out the Thunder schedule, Shea Gilgis Alexander trying to get healthy. Jalen Williams has been battling in injury, so we don't even know if Oklahoma City will have its full roster yeah. the rest of this week. So, like to me, the floor seems to be the two seed. You're right, Phil. They are aiming, they are gunning for the one. I get it. Why not? You may as well, even with the pressure associated with it. Hey, if they're the two seed, there's going to be all sorts of pressure. So why not be the one seed? So that is the idea. So yeah, buckle up, maybe more so for tomorrow night. How much fun is tomorrow night going to be? But yeah, Phil, like to me, the best possible outcome, I still think it's Sacramento, right? With no Malik Monk, no Kevin Herter, bring on the Sacramento Kings. Is that a possibility? Or are you opening up against, yeah, LeBron, KD, like New Orleans, we know how bad a matchup that is. New Orleans, like Brandon Ingram is on the cusp of coming back. They looked really, really good the other night, right? So, like, if you're the one, if New Orleans is the eight, that is a tricky matchup. The Lakers, we get it. You're playing practically eight on five because the Lakers get such a favorable whistle, right? So, whether they're the one or the two, like, unless it's Sacramento or Golden State, I still think the Wolves beat the Warriors in five. Like, Golden State wins a game, but I don't know how Golden State wins more than a game. Maybe it gets to six, but to me, that series ends in five. So, like, if you're a Wolves fan and you want to see them win a playoff series for the first time in 20 years since the spring of 2004, like, to me, bring on Sacramento or Golden State. I still think with home court advantage, Phil, like, you should beat the Lakers. Even if you're playing eight on five, you should beat the L.A. Lakers. I'll tell you what, though, Phoenix and New Orleans – yeah. Uh, Those are cheap, tricky, tricky matchups. Cheap plug for flagrant howls yesterday where I gave Judd in order the nine teams that the Wolves could face at some point in the Western Conference playoffs. And I ranked them from favorable to please avoid at all costs. You can check that out on yesterday's flagrant howls, Apple, Spotify, and the Scorn Earth YouTube channel. All right. Well, just a little teaser. Who was number one on your avoid at all cost list? Phoenix. Yeah. I, I get it. I don't like it. It's not to mention they have like besides we talk about, you know, obviously Durant, Booker, Beal, Grayson Allen leads the NBA in three point make percentage. They've got Royce O'Neal. They 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 snagged at the trade deadline. They I mean, it's like it, they're switchy. They are versatile. They are sharpshooters and they have one of the greatest offensive players of all time in Kevin Durant. It's um and on the Pelicans front, so the Pelicans were also in the in the top three, avoided all costs. Zion, the thing is, like, the Wolves can throw Jaden McDaniels at pretty much any. You can throw Jaden McDaniels at Luka. You can throw him at Kawhi and Paul George. You can't throw him at Zion. There's a 100-pound difference in terms of size. So it's uh, there's a couple teams that I'd like to wait till later in the playoffs <laughs> to match up with. We agree. Yeah, I mean, I still might put Denver, and I get it. Like, the Wolves love their matchup with Denver. I still might put Denver above, like, potentially New Orleans. Like, Denver, to me, is somewhere in that top two avoid at all costs. But I also understand it. If you're a Wolves fan listening to this or you're the Wolves, you're like, no. Like, we love matching up with Denver. But there's still something. Maybe it's the championship pedigree. There's still something about Denver that would worry me. But, like, in terms of first-round matchups, yes, Phoenix and New Orleans. Heck, you think about the Wolves – Worst offensive performance this season against Phoenix. Yeah. Their worst defensive performance this season, the first game against Phoenix. So, like, they have played miserable against the Suns. The only weird thing about the Suns is, like, and I get it, it switches with the playoffs, but they are not a great fourth quarter team. And I get it, guys have been in and out of the lineup. It seems like they're okay now. 
That would be tricky, though, Phil. Could you imagine eight seed Phoenix against one seed Minnesota? Oh, like, what so would be the so odds many people on that? Would, so many people would pick the Suns to win that series. Absolutely. Like national talking heads. Yeah. I mean, I guess the Wolves would be favorites, but like minus 120, something like that. Minus 130. Yeah. Like just a tiny favorite, right? Like, yeah. I mean, a lot of people would pick Phoenix. I have no doubt about that. Yeah. Hey, Dukes, on, on the Twins, uh, beyond what's go- gone on with the lack of run scoring, so Friday night, I see a clip. I think I sent this to, to you as well. I'll come across X. Walker Jenkins, second inning of the Fort Myers, I think it was their first game, crashes into the it was. center yeah. field wall, strains mm-hmm. a-, a hamstring. Mm-hmm. You know, Royce Lewis is out here. Brooks Lee is out for, what, a month, th- the rest of this month with a bad back. Walker Jenkins gets hurt. You know how some years start off where you're like, this isn't the team's year? This just feels like an organizational like, – because it's no one's fault. He's straight a hamstring. It's going to happen. It, it can happen. But, my God, can anybody just stay healthy? Yeah, I get it. Like, Declan, you were standing there with me when we spoke with Royce Lewis, big fan of Score North Royce Lewis, on Thursday. When he declared to us, that was the first time I had heard of Declan, a partially torn quad, grade mm-hmm. two strain, mm-hmm. PRP injection. Mm-hmm. Like the first thing that hit me, Declan, was, okay, like maybe June 15th? Yeah. Maybe he's back sooner. Maybe it's June 1st. But like we're talking summertime for Royce Lewis back in the Twins lineup. Even though he's the most optimistic person on the planet, like it's going to be a while. Brooks Lee, maybe the end of this month, but he's still a couple weeks away. Yeah, Jenkins now on the seven-day injured list, and I'm not sure he'll be back in the seven days. Thankfully, it's a strain, nothing more severe. But then you think about the relievers, although Caleb Theobar will throw today in St. Paul. It's a day game or an afternoon game in St. Paul. The Saints playing the Iowa Cubs. So we'll see Caleb Theobar back today in St. Paul. Heck, back with the Twins by the end of the week. Justin Topa, my understanding is, is doing well with, I think it's a knee situation, so he should be back pretty quick. Duran is trying to ramp things up, but Oblique, that's a tricky injury. Yeah. So you didn't mention him, Judd. Duran is still going to be a handful of weeks. Yeah. So, yes, super, super unfortunate. Thankfully, Byron Buxton, that diving catch last night, thankfully he didn't break anything. He got up. <laughs> I was thrilled. Yeah, he was awesome. I, I talked to Royce again yesterday, too, and he said same thing. Like, he doesn't feel injured. Like that, that's the tricky thing with, with these quad, like he's walking around, he's in the clubhouse, he's chummy and he's going home and he's going to Wolves games. And he said he doesn't feel hurt. So the, just like obliques with Duran, just like quads with, with Royce, these ones can be very, very tricky. Duran too has been roaming the clubhouse and around and stuff. By the way, that guy in person, uh, Duran, that is a monster. Fr- that is a monster and frightening looking human being. I would not want to be down, uh, in, in, down in a corner against against someone like 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 Durant or just or, in the batter's box. Batter's box. Could you imagine the just batter's standing box. in the batter's yeah. box facing that human Either being? Either or. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Duke. How about Royce, by the way? So he was in the upper deck last week. Was it the Raptors game? Yeah. So like Kirilov bought tickets on like SeatGeek or something. They end up sitting in the upper deck. That's just classic Royce. <laughs> Dude, we can get you. We can get you. Let's, we'll talk to Jeff Munichy. We can find you a suite somewhere. We can find you a Lexus Courtside club. Courtside seats. Seat. We'll put you on yeah. the big board. All that. <laughs> And he's seated up in 212 row like R. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's classic. Amazing. Dukes, we got to run here. Great stuff. Great scoop session. Two more quickly. Luca Garza, just some clarity. So he signed a contract, a standard contract, well-deserved. It's only for the rest of the season. There is no option for next year. So I wanted to clarify mm-hmm. that. He will be a restricted free agent this summer. Pharrell Payne, the former gopher. Down to a final seven, he will visit Indiana this weekend. The Gopher basketball team lost out on Andrew Morgan, the power forward from Wasika. He committed yesterday to Nebraska. I am catching up with him this afternoon. There is some scuttlebutt that the Gophers really felt like a few days prior to the official announcement yesterday that he was coming here. I don't know what got lost in translation if he officially committed to the Gophers, then changed his mind because Nebraska came in. Last second, maybe with a little bit more, you know, financial incentive. I want to get some clarity on that. But, like, the Gophers miss out on a kid, just like Nate Heisey, that they really, really wanted. So, it's just – it's not going well right now. Hey, long time to go. A lot of guys in the portal. 
but the Gophers miss out on Heisey. They miss out on Andrew Morgan. Yeah. Wah, wah, NIL. All right, Dukes. We'll do it again on Thursday, man. Okay, sounds good. See ya. Darren Doogie Wilson from the 5 Eyewitness News Sports Department here. Another Scoop Tuesday on Minnesota Sports with Mackie and Judd.